Today for you, I have another painting. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the studio. I'm Charla Marskull. This is part three of a series that I've set out for myself where I am challenging my art process. I promised that I would show you the good and the bad and today you almost got to see the bad. Well, you will get to see the bad because partway through it just kind of goes in a direction where I was very unsure about things. Even though I know that most paintings have some ugly, chaotic stages to them, this painting was a little more challenging because as you'll see, there's not a lot of face and there is a lot of hands and there's also a lot of negative space. And I was a little bit concerned that I couldn't pull it together in the short amount of time that I had set out to finish this painting in. You'll get to see the whole process. And I know you're here to see my painting and not my talking head. So let's get started. The challenge that I set out for myself in this painting had three parts. One was a limited palette in the colors of blue. Second was to paint hands and third was to paint low key and, and quickly. So maybe there's four parts. Some of those things aren't really new for me. I've painted hands before, I've painted low key before. The limited palette is really truly the biggest challenge for me because I love to paint haphazard all over my canvas and I depend on a whole bunch of techniques to pull that all together and I love that freedom but freedom in art really comes through practice and through study and through the not so fun parts of learning. I think it's really important for us to consider that art is awesome and fun. Being an artist is really an incredible blessing because we get to go into our studios every day and create what we love the most, just bring things out of our deep creative genius out into the world. And I think for myself, that's a pretty awesome thing to do. My best days are when I walk into that studio, set everything up, start painting and enter into flow. And five hours later, I emerge from this space where I've created something that I'm not even sure how it came to be on that canvas. It feels nothing short of divine to me. Those are the days that I live for and I work towards. That kind of creating is called flow and flow can happen in any space. It doesn't have to be the visual arts. It can happen in any area that you're working in, such as baking or cleaning, or if you're not in the visual arts world, it can happen when you're in the gym, when you're working at your cubicle. It can happen anywhere. One of the keys to entering into flow is having a very low difficulty level. So if you are learning something new, it's very challenging to enter into flow. If you are learning something new every day, you're probably not going to get into flow very often. So getting into flow means that we have to have already learned. We have to have already practiced and studied these skills. We have to have put these skills into our subconscious where we no longer have to think about them. It's like walking or breathing. If you've ever watched a child learn how to walk, they are very focused. Nothing can distract them. I remember when my second son was learning to walk, he was getting so good at it, he was walking back and forth between the living room and the kitchen, and there was a slight dip in the flooring going from the dining room into the kitchen. It was just a slight dip, and that dip was treacherous to this little one-year-old who was learning how to walk, and it made us laugh. But I think back to how he could not enter into flow while he was walking because he had to be focused and concentrated at every single step. He's now 13 and he can run over difficult terrain without even considering where his feet are going because he's so good at using his feet to move his body. He enters into flow every day when he gets out of bed and starts to walk. He enters into the flow of walking. Us as artists, our my best moment is entering into the flow of creating. But there is a point where flow can even hinder work. It is hard to move to a new level, to take on a new skill, to rise up if our difficulty level is only remaining at a 4%. And that's the difficulty level they say you need around a 4% difficulty level if you want to enter into flow, which means you're doing stuff that's pretty easy that you are really good at already. I love flow. I am a huge pusher of flow, if I can say that. This series that I have started, however, has taken me out of 
all flow experience over the last couple weeks and put me into this place where I am using my conscious brain and my conscious thoughts to create new movement in my hands, to create new thought patterns in my brain. And it's uncomfortable. I have to focus and I have to trust and I have to believe that I can learn, that I can overcome it. When I'm working with a limited color palette, I'm having to think differently. I can't just grab a color and balance out my canvas. I have to be very specific at the type of colors that I'm choosing. For instance, my canvas today is all cool and blue and I have to figure out how to balance the warmth and how to balance the tones without being able to grab the very easy color of yellow to brighten it and to balance with some warm tones. So I'm having to overcome that challenge. It's not as easy for me because the answers are different and I'm learning them. When I paint a painting like this, even though I'm painting quickly and I'm really only painting for about three hours, I'm really tired at the end of the day and I think that's also a part of pushing ourselves to learn new things. So there's a lot of discomfort in that process. One of the reasons that I'm pushing myself to stick with this limited palette idea is because I can still feel the challenge. You know, I have not broken through that wall or popped through that ceiling. I haven't burst through that ceiling of learning yet. It's still not a simple, easy thing for me to grab this limited palette and know the answer to balance my painting. So I'm pushing through and the next time I'm in my studio, I'm going to stick with the limited palette and the next time I will stick with it until I figure it out. What I'm really excited to see is when that difficulty level goes from 100% to 80 to 50 to 40 to 30 and then I enter into my studio to paint a portrait the way I dream of painting portraits and that difficulty levels down because I've now gained these new skills. They're now in my subconscious. They've now beaten those paths in my brain and I decide to paint a portrait. It's going to be really exciting to see how my flow has changed, to see what new bends are in the river of flow of creativity within my studio. That is what's driving me to continue and be successful in these three hour studies that I'm challenging myself to do in the studio. I'm a fairly introverted artist who really enjoys endless days in my studio and some of my friends don't really understand that. They think I usually need to get out of the house if I'm having a bad day, which is probably true. But I think also coming with that comfort of my studio and my alone time, it means that I like to be in my comfort zones. And as artists, that's a dangerous place to be. So I am a flow pusher. I'm also a believer in being alone in my studio for endless hours and days at a time. But I am not a believer in staying in your comfort zone. It feels good. I like my comfort zones but I like to push those walls out and create new comfort zones for myself and be able to enter into flow in new places and in new ways. Today, my message is really about challenging yourself because that's how we grow and that's how we find new things and we discover new things and we become a new person. We change and we grow and we see the world differently. And us as artists, even though we have messages to put out into the world, we also have to learn and take messages inside our own soul. So today it's all about getting uncomfortable. Challenge yourself, open up that working brain, that part of you that's ready to learn and push and be uncomfortable, learn, grow, challenge yourself. The moral of the story is in order to be able to enter into flow and get to that 4% difficulty level to get into flow, you first have to get really uncomfortable and be at that 100% or maybe just 90% difficulty level. Challenge yourself and work until you burst through that wall or that boundary or whatever is holding you back with, from learning that new thing. Practice over and over and study and study and practice until it's easy. And then do it again. That's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this painting come to life. Let me know if you saw that place where I got really uncomfortable and thought it was going to be a failure. 
If you're enjoying this channel and watching my process, I'd absolutely love for you to subscribe and hit that bell so you can get notified. That's how I know you're liking what I'm doing. Thank you so much for hanging out. You're one of the lucky ones who made it all the way to the end. I fully appreciate every watch time minute that you're here on my channel. Believe me, I am so thankful for you. This is it for today and I will see you next time with a brand new painting. I'm Sharla. See you later.